Okay, good morning everybody. This is Bob Coppage with Simplex IT and uh, we're actually going to have the smart person being Patty who will be actually doing majority of the presentation, but I'm <laughs> going to get it started, which means this is going to get better, trust me. Anyway, I'd like to welcome you <laughs> all to the uh, monthly office webinar that we do and uh, this time we decided to do kind of an overview of Office 365. Uh, Simplex IT actually has done about 80, that's 80 or so, of 365 implementations directly or indirectly for customers, anywhere from just a couple users on up to several hundred, and uh, it's a great product, and we just wanted to give you an overview of this, and so that's what Patty's going to do. Uh, Patty, do you want to move the slide to the next? Yay! This is our NASCAR slide where we basically show the partners and the awards and all that good fun stuff. Yay, we're wonderful. Uh, we essentially, our goal is to be the IT uh, department for small and medium businesses or to support existing IT departments for small and medium businesses. This is our, aren't we wonderful here, uh, questions and for why you should use us and all that. So cool. We can just go through these relatively quickly. We're also talking about the Simplex DBA program, which is essentially assisting companies with their corporate data, both from a monitoring uh, uh, health and performance. And then Simplex PM, which actually Patty heads up using, among other things, uh, Office 365 actually has Project Online, which is a uh, cloud-based implementation of Project Server, which uh, Patty is very familiar with and also does a monthly webinar on that. Uh, so, okay, go on to the next. And we do a whole bunch of stuff. And this month uh, is no exception. The big thing is, of course, next Wednesday is our summer picnic, uh, which everybody's, this is our, actually our eighth annual picnic. And we invite everybody, right now we've got about 60 or so RSVPs. Uh, and we actually have Microsoft will be out here. They will be setting up a Windows 10 bar. So if you haven't uh, done things with uh, Windows 10 or made a decision, you just want to see how it works, come on out. Uh, we'll also have some other things going on as well. And it's not a sales pitch. This is just networking fun, all that kind of fun silliness. Uh, as well as then the following day, then Patty has another webinar talking about project management with effective project communication. And you can see the other stuff. One in particular, uh, next month office webinar is because we like to show both sides of the fence, we're gonna talk about the gotchas in Office 365 because not everything is perfect. Uh, and we wanna show what some of the uh, challenges are and how to get around those. So, okay, all of these are free, they're open to the public. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Patty. <laughs> all right, thanks, Bob. We may be hearing from you uh, shortly on some of the administrative uh, options within Office 365. But before we get there, um, let's just level set a little bit and uh, welcome everybody to the Office 365 overview webinar. Um, so the purpose of today's webinar is really just to touch on Office 365. We're not going to get very deep into any one topic or any one um, application, but just to, to sort of um, talk about Office 365, what it is, how you get it, why you might want it, uh, things like that. So certainly feel free to ask questions as we move along. You can either type them in the chat window or um, just chime in whenever you think of a question. Uh, we'll be pretty informal here today. Um, so basically, just, just again to level set everybody, Office 365 is very similar to the traditional Office products that you're used to working with. They are the same products, um, but it's a sub subscription-based service. So one of the advantages to using a subscri subscription-based service, which I cannot say today for some reason, <laughs> um, is that it's always kept up to date. So you pay the service fee um, or the subscription fee, and you automatically get the new upgraded versions as they come out. So it's not like um, back when you know you had to switch from office from one version of office to the other it was this big investment and then half of your office was using one version and the other half was using another and you had to save it in different versions um, so it keeps everything the same and everything up to date uh, so there's a couple of different subscriptions available um, there are many different subscriptions available and this is the thing that, that still trips me up um, basically just at the very basic level there's the personal and business um, options. So if you're just looking uh, for a solution at home, you know, your college student or 
um, you know, you, you just want office for home, you would look at some of the personal options. Um, and then business offers you a little bit more for uh, your enterprise. So um, giving you a little bit more collaboration, uh, being able to work with other uh, folks across your organization with uh, calendaring and uh, OneDrive, things like that. Um, and then basically within these two, um, it, it Again, to simplify, it, it's basically, are you looking to do email? Are you looking to do office products or both? Um, so those are, those are a couple of the decisions that you have to think about. Um, the pricing we can go over in, in uh, the next slide, um, but very minimal between the two. Um, I think email is, you know, the least office is kind of right in the middle. And then both, of course, is, um, includes both of them, which is the, the uh, largest investment. Um, and then you can actually pay month to month or yearly. Um, I believe that there's a small discount for paying yearly, um, or you can go month to month. Um, the thing that I like to point out, too, is that you're not restricted to whichever subscription you originally sign up for. So if you sign up for email, let's say, and, you know, in the first week you realize that you are just blown away and you want the full office, uh, you can switch that at any point. Um, you don't have to wait for, you know. Your, your cycle to be up or the month, you know, billing cycle for the month to be up. Um, you can do that at any time. Microsoft will take your money whenever you want to give it to them. <laughs> um, and vice versa. If you decide that you uh, went with a subscription for Office, let's say that, you know, you don't really you find that you don't need or whatever and you just want um, email, you can always back that down to a different subscription. Okay. Um, so I have a couple links here, and I also have them open in a web browser uh, behind this presentation, which we'll touch on um, as soon as we get through these slides. But um, I just put them in here so that you would have them for future reference. Uh, there's a couple different uh, web pages. If you just do a quick Google search for, you know, Office 365, uh, you'll find these easily um, uh, for both personal and business and enterprise. Okay. Um, there's a couple different ways to get these office applications, again, depending on the subscription uh, that you purchase. Uh, you can have a full install. So um, I can choose to purchase uh, Office. I can install Word and Excel and Outlook and everything on my computer, just like what you're used to working with. Um, the only difference is you pay a subscription fee to use it. Um, so it's, it's installed on your computer. You can use it when you're online, offline, whatever. Um, there's also the web application. So the web applications, um, I'm sure that there is a very technical explanation for what they are. I think of them as kind of a scaled down version of the Office software. Um, so it's available through any web browser. Um, and, you know, like with working with any web browser, it's, it's what you would expect. <laughs> um, it, it's always nicer, in my opinion, to work with an actual application installed on my computer. However, uh, if, if that's not an option or if you're looking to reduce your budget, these web applications can do a lot of the same functionality. Um, I know a lot of folks are familiar with Outlook Webmail. So if you've ever used Webmail in the past, I always think that's a good benchmark. So think of, okay, um, you know, when you're at the office, you have your Outlook program installed, and I'm sure you love it, and you have all your folders and, you know, all of your uh, rules and everything set up. Uh, but then when you go home and check your email, you may you may do that through Outlook Webmail, through a web browser. Um, and, you know, you can still see your email. You can still send email. You can still put your email in folders and look at your calendar and everything. But it's just a little bit of a different look and feel. Um, so that, that's kind of the same thing with, you know, Word and Excel and PowerPoint and so on. And I'll show you some of those, too, um, when we get into the demo portion. Okay. Um, so just very quickly, um, some of the features uh, that, that Office 365 offers um, is, of course, email. So the nice thing about Office 365 keeps all your emails in sync across all your devices. When you purchase an Office 365 subscri subscription, um, you are able to install software on up to five different devices. So if you wanted to have it on your iPad, um, on your laptop, on your home you know, desktop, what have you. We have up to five different devices, and everything's always kept in sync. Um, also comes with uh, Skype for Business, um, or just Skype, depending on which subscription you choose. The personal subscriptions, um, I believe, just come with Skype, um, and then obviously the business and enterprise ones come with Skype for Business. Um, but if you caught our Skype for Business webinar a couple months ago, you'll remember that we have um, instant messaging uh, capabilities, 
um, you know, calling information, scheduling information um, with those little indicators at the top. So I can see if, you know, if Bob is available or if he's busy, I can send him an instant message. I can call him. I can do a video chat. I can bug him all sorts of different ways. <laughs> um, so if you yep, didn't catch that. I'll vouch for that. <laughs> and he knows what I do. Yep. <laughs> so. Uh, if you haven't if you haven't had a chance to check out the Skype for Business um, webinar, please do. I believe it's out on YouTube already, um, and uh, uh, it's a nice little overview of uh, of some of the capabilities. If you are familiar with Link, um, it's Skype for Business uh, took over Link, so uh, a lot of the same capabilities and then more. Uh, video conferencing kind of goes hand in hand with Skype for Business um, because that's that's what provides the video conferencing. So um, here you can have one-on-one -on -one video calls um, just like you would through you know FaceTime or whatever other application you've used. Um, but you can also have multiple participants as well. So um, you can have many people dialed in and have a, a video conference with multiple parties. Um, and then the thing that's nice too um, that is different from a lot of other applications is that it's not limited to just people within your organization. So you can create Skype for business um, uh, video conferences for, you know, for people in your enterprise, in your office, and then also you know, clients or customers or whatever outside your conference, or I'm sorry, outside your uh, organization. It's really easy to do. Um, of course, one of the greatest things about Office 365 is the collaboration. So you can easily um, view files within your organization. You can track changes. You can um, revise documents. And it's real time from any device. So uh, if you're working on it on your laptop or on your desktop at home, and then you go out to watch your kid's soccer game, you can finish it on your iPad, of course, while they're taking a break, because you wouldn't want to not pay attention to the soccer game. Uh, so easy, um, easy ways to pick up different um, uh, changes from whatever device you're, you're working on. Um, and you can share those documents um, and collaborate with other people. We had a uh, OneDrive webinar last month. Um, if you didn't catch that, I believe that's out on YouTube. If it's not out yet, it should be out shortly. Um, just a, a little bit of a shorter webinar, but talks about some of the um, features and capabilities within uh, OneDrive and how we can share, share files and collaborate. All right, um, so we've probably talked enough about Office 365. <laughs> Why don't we take a look at it? Um, before we do, I just want to show you some of the different options that we were talking about as far as um, purchasing Office 365. So again, it, this is no secret, a quick Google search, and you, you can find any of these web pages. But I just wanted to show it to you um, here since we were talking about it. Uh, one of the most confusing things, in my opinion, is is what the subscription services um, entail. So uh, you know, what's the difference between personal and home? And the easiest way to do that is to go to the products page and just search through uh, the table. So if you're looking for you know, up to five devices, make sure you get the home and not the personal. Uh, if you're looking for uh, Skype, make sure you get the home or personal and not the student. Um, so you know, take take time to look through some of these different options because um, they can either save you money um, <laughs> or cost you cost you money that you don't necessarily want to spend. So that's the that's the personal. Um, for business, uh, you have the essentials and then uh, business and then premium. So again, uh, minor differences in cost per month or you can buy by the year. Um, and again, I believe that there are uh, discounts available if you buy by the year. Um, and again, here you have email, office, or both, um, and up to five different users, or I'm sorry, up to five different uh, devices uh, for any one of these business plans. Patty, if I could chime in here real quick. Please. Um, here's one of the things where it's either relatively simply or it's convoluted as all, all get out. <laughs> yes. Uh, Microsoft has basically, there is the, the personal and home, as Patty was showing, and there's the business, which is aimed at smaller organizations. Uh, lower than it can be as, as few as one up to 300 and then you've got the enterprise which pretty much can be unlimited number of, of, of users and relatively speaking there are some uh, uh, key differences between them uh, and unfortunately it doesn't end there there are actually about 50 to 75 different plan types 
or product mixes that you can select when you're talking about Office 365. Uh, you need to take a look at this. And this is one where, not to, to toot our own horn, if you're looking to go with Office 365 and you're not sure which subscription, because there are subtle differences like remote desktop usage, uh, Office Standard versus Office, Office Professional, talk to somebody like, oh, us. And in a five to 10 minute conversation, we can save you a world of grief later on. <laughs> Yep. Thanks, Bob. Um, I did just switch over to the enterprise just as you were talking, um, and you'll notice all the different options along the top. And then, like Bob said, you can you can even go further here as well with customizing your subscription. So, um, so certainly pay attention uh, to that, like Bob said. All right. Um, so one of the first things that I did, I just went to web browser and I went to portal.office.com. That's just the the shortcut URL. Um, you have a hyperlink, whatever, um, to that uh, to that location, and then here is the Office 365 homepage. Okay, uh, so this homepage may look different than uh, maybe what you're seeing if you're using Office 365, or maybe different from what uh, you've looked at online, uh, because I may have a different subscription than you, or your neighbor, or your best friend, <laughs> or the person sitting next to you at work. So. Um, the the little squares, the icons that you see here, are basically um, uh, the web apps that I have available to me. So I have Mail, Calendar, uh, you know, OneDrive, OneNote, Word. Um, these are all the the programs that I have available to me based on my subscription. Okay, um, it looks like I can install Office on more devices. I probably haven't exceeded my five devices yet. Um, you can install on PC or Mac, if we have any Mac users, and iPad, if you have uh, any iPad users on the line. Um, so really nice to be able to edit your you know, Word and Excel documents um, with those different devices. Okay. Um, I just want to show you very briefly a little bit about um, kind of what each one of these looks like. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time in any uh, individual application, because I know we don't have a lot of time. But just very briefly, let me show you what um, what the mail looks like. <clears throat> it's very similar to Outlook. Uh, I think over the years, uh, Microsoft has gotten a lot better with keeping the look and feel of the applications um, a little bit more in line with each other, whether you have the full install or uh, the web app. Um, but you'll notice here, I have my email. Um, I have my view pane over on the right. I can still check all my email. I can still do my searching. Uh, I can create new email. And then typical, you know, delete or archive junk. I can put things in folders if I want to. Uh, very similar to the Outlook that I have installed on my, on my computer. Okay. Um, I actually use both. I do have it installed on my computer. Um, sometimes I find that if I'm out, um, uh, using this Office 365 portal for whatever reason, sometimes it's just easier to check an email here and reply to it here rather than switching programs. Um, it just depends what I have to do. If it's a lengthy email um, or sometimes with a meeting invite, things like that, I may choose to do right out of Outlook. Okay. All right. Um, the other thing is the calendar. Uh, very similar, again, probably to what you're familiar with. Um, with your calendars uh, in Outlook on your desktop. Here you can see both mine and Bob's calendars. Uh, I can switch to day, week, month, whatever different view that I have. Um, I can choose to hide his calendar and you can see mine. I can choose to view his and not mine and so on. Um, I can create a new appointment by clicking new and I can create a new uh, meeting here as well. So um, I can attach files. I can convert it to a Skype meeting. And the only thing that does is give me a link to include in my meeting um, invite. So here when somebody find uh, when somebody else receives this uh, meeting invite, all they have to do is click on the link and they uh, then are taken to the Skype meeting. Probably just what we did for the uh, meeting for the webinar. Uh, I'm going to discard this. I don't need to keep it. And then some of the other things that I wanted to show you, 
Um, I know that we talked about OneDrive last month, um, but just as a quick overview, let's take a look at that. Um, OneDrive is basically um, uh, a place for you to store all of your documents. Um, and then within that, uh, you can share with various people. Um, you can sync back to your desktop so that you don't have to you know, upload every document that you want to share and so on. You've got file, a little bit of a file structure here. Um, you've got your different uh, documents, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, doesn't matter. Um, if I click on it, I can see a quick, <laughs> a quick um, preview of what it looks like, who it's shared with, um, and so on. So here's the real document. Um, so here I can see, oh yeah, that's, that's what I want to open. I can open it, change it, share it with somebody else, um, choose to follow it. If it's somebody else's uh, document, I want to be made aware of uh, any changes made to it. I can choose to open it in Word or in Word Online um, or download it, look at the version history, and so on. Um, so that's OneDrive. Uh, if you're interested in that, like I said, check out our YouTube video on, on OneDrive. Um, that should be up shortly if it's not up already. Um, I do have some different team sites available to me. Um, and I believe that this is also available in all of the business and enterprise subscriptions, uh, Bob, and correct me if I'm wrong on that, um, but I believe that there, there is a small component um, for creating team sites um, or intranet portals uh, for your organization. And maybe that'll be a good topic for a future, um, a future office webinar. Um, and then just to get into some of the programs that you're probably more familiar with than OneDrive and Sites, um, let me just show you what, uh, what Word looks like online. <clears throat> so here, if I want to create a new document in Word, um, you'll notice it's very similar to what, uh, what you might be familiar with um, from using Word installed on your computer. Um, so, oh, what do we want to do? How about general notes? Then click on the general notes template. I could have clicked on a blank template if, or a blank page if I just wanted to start from scratch, but I figured this would give us some text in here to look at and play with. Um, so you'll notice I'll just run through some of these uh, menu options so you can see what, what it'll look like. Um, you've still got the same ribbon that you may be familiar with if you're using one of the more current versions of Office. Um, so here I can very easily edit my text. Um, I can change the font and do any of the formatting. Um, insert is very similar uh, to what you have. All of this is very similar to what you have in the installed versions. I can manage my page layout. This is where I change my margins and my uh, orientation. Um, I can even do a, uh, a quick review. You'll notice it's a little bit different. This one is a little bit different than uh, Word installed on your computer. Um, with the track changes, um, but I can still add a comment and I can still show comments. I can bounce through um, all of the comments just by clicking next or previous. Um, and then I can change the view. So right now I have it in editing view, which is what I prefer to work in. Um, but of course there's the reading view, which will show you the two pages side by side, like you're reading a book. Um, I only have the one page, so that's why you're only seeing the one page. Now um, I can still choose to edit the document here. I can print it or share it or view the comments. And then of course I have my ellipsis button that has even more options. Anytime I want to get back home to the, uh, uh, to, well not back home, but anytime I want to get uh, switch uh, apps, I can just click on the uh, menu button up there at the top and then I can select a different application to view. So here is Excel. Um, and let me show you a little bit about what Excel looks like. So here in Excel, again, um, you have your main grid. Um, I have my home ribbon that controls all of my um, formatting for the most part, you know, your font and your number formatting, things like that. Um, you can insert different charts. Uh, let's say if I wanted to insert a column chart, I can do that. And then, of course, I can double click on it to uh, go in and make any changes to the chart, add the data, um, and then control some of the uh, charting options. 
Um, here I can control uh, quite a bit of the uh, the way the chart is created with the axis. Um, I can change the title, the uh, chart title and the data labels and the axis and the grid lines. Um, so there's quite a bit on charting uh, here uh, that's very similar to the installed version of Excel. Again, you have the same view option, so you can you can switch from editing view to reading view and back and forth. Um, similar review options as what we saw in Word Online. So here I can add comments and show comments. Um, and then back to the insert tab where you can insert um, the different charting options, links, comments, functions, surveys, etc. Uh, the next one that I want to show you is PowerPoint. Uh, so, and PowerPoint is probably the one I've played with the least, um, in all honesty, in the online version. Um, I tend to do most of my PowerPoint work um, just with the program installed on my computer, not necessarily the online version. Um, and I don't know why that is. I think it's just a preference. Uh, <laughs> or maybe because I don't collaborate with a lot of other people on my PowerPoint presentations, and I do more so on my Word documents and my Excel documents. Um, but it's very similar to Word and Excel in that it's kind of a scaled down version. You do have a lot of capabilities. Here I can add my title of my slide, um, and it'll walk me through just like the installed version. Um, all of my um, formatting options are available in the home. Uh, tab of the ribbon up at the top. My insert tab gives me the option to insert uh, text box or pictures, tables, what have you. Um, I can design uh, different uh, slide templates uh, here if I wanted to make a change or if I just uh, wanted to tweak my um, template that I had chosen. I can tweak it a little bit here as well. Um, here are my transition options, so going from one slide to the next, and then some animation options if I wanted to um, have something to appear as a fade in or a fly in um, or so on. So um, a lot of the capabilities, not all of them, um, but most of them here in PowerPoint. And then if you're, the nice thing uh, about all of these programs, I don't think I mentioned it with the others, if you're working in this program and you realize, oh, geez, I want to... Um, you know, whatever, uh, run through and do a timer and, and sort of practice my presentation. Um, I think that's one of the things that's not really available on the online version. If that's something that you wanted to do or you stumbled across something that wasn't available, you do have the button up here at the top that says open in PowerPoint. So that will actually open up whatever file you have in, in the PowerPoint application that you have installed. Um, so it's very easy to go back and forth if you start in one and you, know, and you want to go to the other. Um, so the view tab also gives me my um, editing view uh, and reading view, just like Word and Excel. I can do my slideshow, um, just like what you saw earlier, uh, and then view my notes and any comments that you see here. I can easily add my title and add a subtitle. And then if I wanted to add additional slides, I can choose which type of slide I want to add. Uh, let's say to content. And just build my presentation that way. So I'd like to, uh, as we go through these Office, Online, uh, Office 365 or Office Online webinars, I'd like to take each month and go into uh, detail on some of the functionality of each of these programs. So uh, look for those in future months for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, um, at least. Um, and then I get into a lot of uh, project on online stuff too in the project management webinars. Um, but I, I would like to cover uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and then also uh, OneNote. I know that we have a OneNote uh, video out there, but um, maybe we can talk a little bit about OneNote online specifically. Okay. Um, so why don't we take a look at that? Just touch on OneNote. Uh, if you're not familiar with OneNote, it's basically like your uh, little electronic notebook. You have different dividers and pages and tabs, um, and you can have multiple notebooks. So if you had a personal notebook or, um, you know, 
for whatever reason you can. Multiple notebooks, multiple sections, multiple pages. Um, I love OneNote. Uh, anybody that knows me knows that I <laughs> have recently fallen in love with it in the last year or so. Um, so uh, a, a OneNote online uh, webinar would be fun for me to do. Um, I picked an empty notebook here, so if I wanted to create a new section, I can create a new section here. And I can add some notes. If I realize that I don't want the OneNote online version, I can always open it in regular OneNote. Um, here I can obviously print, share, so on. My home tab has all of the same um, formatting options that you saw in Word and Excel and PowerPoint, very similar. Um, I can add new sections, new pages. I can add tables, pictures, online pictures. Um, I do that a lot with, um, well, for whiteboarding out something. It's very nice to be able to take a picture of the whiteboard and then place it right in my notes file. Um, again, very similar views uh, as to what you saw in the other office programs. Um, and then, of course, I can print from here as well, uh, which will probably take a moment. <laughs> oh, no, there we go. Let me cancel that since I don't really want to print. Um, so, so yeah, like I said, look for those in, um, in future webinars. Um, I would like to go into a little bit deeper dive with each of those. Um, if you're interested, I can show you projects real quick. Um, I know that's not a typical office uh, program that most people use, um, but if you've used Microsoft Project in the past, um, Project Web App is, uh, is a nice complementary uh, program to that, very similar to Microsoft Project. Um, the nice thing about um, Project Online is that you don't have to have anything installed, and uh, Microsoft Project is one of the more expensive programs that Microsoft offers. Um, so here I can select a project, and I can view the project task list and the Gantt chart. And this one I probably picked a blank one. Ah. <laughs> Let me go back and pick another one that I know has some content to it. Um, all right, here I can see my project details, when it was uh, scheduled to start, when it's scheduled to finish, the owner. Um, this is all customizable, so I can add additional details if I wanted, what department the project was aligned to or what um, maybe what business rule or, or uh, division. Uh, is responsible for that project. Um, but if you've ever seen Microsoft Project, uh, very similar. Again, same concept applies, kind of a scaled down version. Um, scaled down in some regards, I will say, um, as far as adding and removing tasks and, and actually developing the project schedule, but then more robust in others because um, in Project Online, you have these um, project details. You've got uh, a way to approve um, uh, changes to tasks, uh, you've got issues and risk options, you can uh, control resources and view different reports, and all of those are things that are not available in Microsoft Project. So um, for all of the Office programs, it seems like the Office, um, I'm sorry, the uh, Project Online offering is um, is one of the few that actually gives you some more capabilities when you use it online versus on your desktop. Um, and that's just a holdover from the uh, project server days. Um, this project online is very similar to uh, project server. All right, I don't see any questions in the chat window, so let's continue on. Bob, I'm going to ask you to take over, um, and if you'd like, you can share your screen and just kind of show us some of the um, admin capabilities. Uh, I just wanted to show everybody kind of how it is to add a user or maybe to change a subscription, um, reset a password, things like that that, that uh, your typical administrator might, uh, might do. Okay, let me... Get my and I will stop presenting here, so if you see a, a quick flash, it's because I've stopped presenting. Okay. 
And certainly if there are any questions, um, feel free to type them in the chat window and we'll get to those uh, right, right after we uh, wrap up with our presentation. Cool. Patty, do you see my screen? I do. Yay. Okay, this is going to be a little <laughs> bit on the geeky side, but essentially this is the administrative portal. So to whomever you, and we're talking strictly on the business side uh, pretty much here. So your organization sets up, you purchase the Office 365 subscription, your organization now has a portal. And that portal allows you to administer all the licenses, the users, and uh, take care of all of those issues. It is something that, for the most part, the only time you're really going to go to it is when you're making changes. Uh, new employees, former employees, uh, new email addresses, all that kind of fun stuff. A uh, couple of things just to add on to what Patty was saying. Um, when you start talking about the cost of 365, it's essentially subscriptions. So depending upon the service that you want, it's... You know, if you want the uh, office included and you want the email and you want the Skype for business uh, and you're, you're probably looking at either what's called business premium, which is essentially office standard or the E3 uh, on the enterprise side, which is, includes office professional plus some additional pieces, parts. Uh, and you set up your users and your users, you then assign them the licensing. So, and in this portal, you just go over here, you go to users, you go to active users, and now you're going to see down into the hearts of Simplex IT's uh, 365. So, wow, is this exciting. You'll then <laughs> see all of the users. Now, one of the things you can also do is to integrate this with your organization's local network, otherwise known as the Active Directory or domain, which is one of the things that we've done. So you see all of our users synced with Active Directory. What that means is that you set up your user on your network and that is then automatically replicated up to Office 365 in the cloud. There's a couple ways to do that. Uh, one is to just synchronize the users, and the other one is to actually integrate them into Office 365 with Active Directory, uh, which uses a little bit of uh, Azure. Uh, it also creates a, what's called a single sign-on uh, environment, so which is what we do. That's why you see all these sync with Active Directory. But we'll take somebody who is just out there, and we can edit that user. <coughs> Excuse me. When we edit the user... We give them administrative roles if we want to. We give them whether or not they're allowed to use it. And then here's where we assign licenses. So however many licenses we have, we assign them to that individual user. And literally, almost instantaneously, they then have access to be able to do this. So when you start a new employee, it's actually very easy to give them office or to give them email or to give them whatever. Uh, you literally go here, you click some buttons, you, you add them to it, and boom, they're done. Um, similarly, when you talk about mailbox permissions if you want people to be able to see each other's email or to be able to open somebody else's mailbox uh, or the like or to have email forwarded or to have aliases or the like it's fairly simple fairly straightforward to do these things so email address you can add additional and have uh, aliases as well again this is not something you spend a huge amount of time to going through or, or using it's fairly straightforward, and if you're working with somebody like us, you can always just give us a call and say, hey, I need to do this. How do I do it? Uh, traditional things that you usually, uh, companies want to do with mailboxes, such as aliases, where you, you have, you know, like HR at or accounts payable at or the like that goes to somebody else's mailboxes. You can have as many aliases as you want. Distribution groups, sales goes to everybody in the sales department. You can have as many of those as you want. Neither of those cost an additional dime. If your company has more than one domain, meaning the at part, at simplex-it.com, you can have as many uh, domains in Office 365. They don't cost additional as well. And they're all controlled and monitored through here. Uh, also, Office 365 includes, um, <clears throat> excuse me, also includes uh, spam filtering up front using, uh, they used to call it the forefront 
uh, Microsoft spam filtering. I'll be honest, in my opinion, it's okay. Yay, let's error on the web page while we're presenting. Uh, it, Forefront is okay, it will not win any awards. If you really want to have a high level of spam uh, uh, configuration, uh, then you can actually put an additional spam, spam filter control up front. Uh, we don't get a lot of complaints as far as spam from that standpoint. It, it's pretty good, but it is not the easiest to manage. Uh, it is easy to go in and discover whether or not emails have been delivered or emails have been sent out. Fairly simple through the uh, uh, this administrative console. Um, just to give you an idea what we've done for the single sign-on, You'll notice that I have my apps. If I click on that, within a second or two, what we've done is we've configured the credentials for a number of websites into Office 364, or actually Azure, and it will bring up, of course, we got that error, so we'll see. Uh, but it'll come up with the ability to have access to those applications. Obviously not as quickly as I'd usually link it to. So what we can do is we can actually set up uh, for employees. We can set up, here's how you get to this website, here's how you get to this website. And, oh, that figures. It's not going to show me. Oh, there we go. So we've got Amazon, we've got OpenDNS, eBay, FedEx, all of these accounts, the credentials are actually built into Azure, which means that the employees never really need to know what their passwords are to get into these things. They just sign into 365 and 365 will then allow them to go into these applications. This makes managing uh, employees with a ton of passwords and accounts and systems, especially if an employee leaves, uh, you don't have to worry about changing the password of 12 different applications. If you change the password or, or uh, uh, disable their account in 365, they don't have access to any of those applications if you never gave them the password in the beginning. Uh, it's actually kind of cool, uh, and it's usually a bit faster than this, but uh, that's, that's also part of 365. And I want to stress that 365, there's a ton of choices uh, usually we talk about it's either an E1 or an E3 or it's business premium or it's business essentials. Um, but beyond that, there are a ton of, I only want email. So that's exchange online. I only want SharePoint online. I only want this or I want this, but not this, so on and so forth. It's when you get into those that it gets convoluted. And then there are actually three different ways to purchase 365. You can purchase it directly, which we call the advisor model. You can purchase it, and that's the monthly fee. You can purchase it for an annual fee, uh, which is also called the open agreement. Uh, and then you can also purchase it through us, where you would pay us monthly, which gives you the most flexibility. But there's some strings attached to as far as how you get support. That's the newest model, which is called the CSP model. Sounds convoluted? It is. Why? Because it's Microsoft and that's what they do. Um, and I think that's probably a good. Are there any particular questions on this? Because this is this is a little bit on the, the high end as far as the product goes. Okay, which means that we covered everything perfectly. <laughs> All right, Patty, what else you got? Uh, I don't have anything else, Bob. I just wanted to uh, reiterate what you said about adding uh, new employees and how easy it is to get them up and running. Um, I mean, you said within minutes, you know, you can change the license or add a new user. Um, and I know that this is something that a lot of organizations struggle with, you know, trying to get software installed on a computer, trying to get them, um, you know, email access and office access and, oh, I need, you know, this account for that. So I think um, having that ability to, uh, to move so quickly on at least the Office 365 front, I think is a, a benefit for a lot of folks. Um, but that's all I had for the webinar as far as the contact goes. Oh, I do see a question. Katie, the alias option applied to the, so an alias, if I understand your question, so when you create an alias, any reference to that, so for example, here at Simplex IT, 
I'm, I'm also the HR department. So if you send an email to HR at simplex-IT, it ends up in my mailbox. So from that aspect, if you do a calendar invite to HR at, it ends up in my mailbox and it'll go to my calendar. Is that, is that your question? Well, and also, Bob, I know a lot of people have um, rights to other people's calendars. Like I can see your calendar and I may be able to create uh, a calendar event on your behalf. Uh, that may be what the question is here as well. Okay. Yeah, there's, unfortunately, it's one of those where there's a ton of different things that you can do. So mm -hmm. you can also, it's very easy to share calendar information between people within the organization and to have different levels of access. Uh, so some people can see, but only can see your what free and busy time is. Other people can actually add content to your calendar directly, uh, so on and so forth. So that's fairly easy to do that. You can also have create each individual uh, can create multiple calendars. And so you can create a calendar that is named the same way as the alias. That may be also what you're talking about. And you also can create what are called shared mailboxes. And a shared mailbox is exactly what it sounds like. It's a mailbox, but it's an exchange mailbox, so it includes email, calendar, contacts, but it's not associated with one individual. And you can then give people access to that shared mailbox. They all have to have 365 subscriptions of some kind. Uh, and can then, you, so you can have a, for example, if you wanted to have a calendar that was for a particular project. Uh, without going for the full project online, you can do that. Does that help, Katie? Cool. Uh, a couple other quick things. Uh, we may have covered it. When we talk about 365 mailbox and size, you can actually have up to 50. That's five zero gigabytes of uh, mailbox data for every user. That's not transferable. So person A, person B, person C, each one gets up to 50 gig. Uh, the SharePoint, not quite as generous. Every user you end up with a SharePoint online, you add 500 megabytes to the kitty. So if you have 50 users, that's uh, 50 times 500 or 25 gig of data that can be used for your SharePoint storage, although it's really not expensive to add much more. Uh, the OneDrive for business uh, right now is one terabyte per user. Uh, and my suspicion is within three to six months, it's gonna be unlimited. Uh, the OneDrive is going to go beyond that. Okay, any other questions from anybody? Well, Katie, I'm impressed with your you paying attention enough to actually add, ask a question. So I'm, we're, we're going to give you a copy of Office 2013 Professional, if that's all right. Are you okay with, with, with that? Okay, I got, you know, we didn't want to force awesome. you. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, let me show one last thing. Uh, and this is for any user who's gotten the licensing. This is not an administrative showing, but all the person has to do is go to their portal. So they log on to the portal where Patty was playing and showing everything. They go up here, Office 365 settings, install and manage software. Mm -hmm. And it's right here is this is where, and this shows you right now that I have three devices that are running Office 2013. And I can go right here to install it. And you'll also notice I even have the option of installing Office 2016 now. Okay, which I actually have on my Windows 10 tablet, and so far it works pretty nice. Uh, so I have the option here of 2010, or I can go 2013, or I can go 2016. Your mileage may vary a little bit on the 2010. You may only have the 2013 option. Okay. Patty, that's all I got. All right. Thanks, Bob. That's all I have. Cool. All right. Congratulations, Katie, on your big win. Uh, we'll get that software to you. Cool. And uh, I believe that's all we have for this afternoon. Yep. Remember, next Wednesday, that's our picnic. And next month, we're actually going to be talking about some challenges with Office 365 and how to manage uh, through those. Yes. So thanks, everybody, for showing up. Thanks, Bob.